Hey guys, Rob here with 3D Printscape. A little over a month ago I did a video on the direct drive upgrade and then another video on a fan duct cover that worked with it, uh, just switching it out from the stock one. One of the issues that I had was there isn't much space between the stepper motor here and the fan duct cover. So I wanted to switch out the fan duct cover here again and uh, upgrade the fan. So I've been looking at the 5015 fan for a little while. Uh, so I went ahead and picked one of those up and then I found a fan duct cover uh, that would almost work and I had to modify a couple things on it I had to pretty much cut off some of the extra pieces that were around here uh, so I went ahead and did that in uh, Tinkercad and I'll link to that in the description below so you can go ahead and download it um, but basically uh, it will work with this and it has an attachment here where you can either just print a uh, back or front covering piece on it if you don't want to use a BL touch or it has this attachment here for the BL touch which would utilize the same part that was printed here. Again, I'll link to all this in the description below. I just wanted to talk about it really quick. All right, so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna uh, zoom in on a um, overhang test that I did with the stock fan cover, this fan cover, and then with the upgraded fan duct cover and fan, uh, kind of show you the differences so that way you can decide if the upgrade is worthwhile to you or not. Uh, I'm thinking that it will be, um, but again, it's better to show proof than to just say, hey, it's gonna be better. Um, then after that, I'm going to walk you through the install process, kind of talk about a couple options we have, and then we'll jump over to the computer really quick, update the offsets, um, just go ahead and uh, drop the firmware file on the SD card, plug it back in the printer, uh, just so we have all of those saved. And that's pretty much it. Um, I don't think this is gonna to be too in-depth or too long of a video. Uh, the overall process is pretty straightforward, but if you have any questions about it or would like to uh, have any other videos uh, created, just go ahead and leave a comment below. I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. And if you guys haven't already, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe. Before we get started, just wanna mention one thing really quick. So last week I decided to create a Discord server for 3D Printscape. Uh, so I got that up and running. I'll link to that in the description below. So if you wanna go ahead and join that, you can. Um, basically, it'll just be another community where uh, we can chat, help each other out. If you run into any issues uh, with any of the upgrades or anything you're doing, you can uh, go ahead and uh, leave a comment there and I'll be able to get back to you sooner than just a YouTube comment. Um, but either way works, uh, just another option for you guys. All right guys, so I wanted to show you a quick example of the actual prints. The one on the left here is from the stock enclosure and fan. The one in the middle is from the stock fans uh, with the aftermarket enclosure that I took off in this video. And this one is the one with the new fan and new uh, fan duct cover. If you look at them, they're about 55. They're all pretty close. But once you get above that mark, especially when you start getting into like your 60, 65, 70, and 75, that's where it really starts to make a difference. Here you can actually see 70, 75 quite well, uh, where with the stock one, it was pretty much a mess. Uh, so you've got to decide if the upgrade is worth it to you or not. I think it cost me right around 10 bucks, and I feel it was definitely worth it. So let's go ahead and start the install process. All right, so the first thing we want to do here is disassemble the old fan duct covering. Uh, we'll just go ahead and uh, remove the two screws here. If you have the stock one on here, the process is pretty much the same. You're going to have your two screws here that you have to remove to pop it off. And then we'll take the fans off of the enclosure and then set the BL touch off to the side. So we're going to go through that really quick. All right, now that that's off, we can go ahead and take the fans off. Uh, just be careful when you're working around uh, the heating element and stuff. We don't want to damage those cables. All right, so here's the mount piece for the BL Touch I was talking about. I'll link to it in the description below. It's a generic one that's used for a lot of uh, this type of adapter. It'll just sit on here like this, and then the screw will go through and uh, pretty much just mount right where it needs to go. Uh, so we'll end up putting a bolt on the back side here, and then it'll be good to go. All right, so now we have to make a decision.
We have to decide how we want to wire the fan in. Um, the cable it came with is, I don't know, maybe a foot and a half, give or take. Um, but it's not long enough to um, run by itself. So we either have to um, extend this cable, uh, pretty much slice it, and uh, either put a new uh, two pin connector on the bottom or slice it in the middle and then just use this connector. Or we can slice into this and um, pretty much just pull it back in here so it's hidden behind the sleeve. And that way you don't have to rerun anything. Um, that's the route I'm gonna go here. Uh, one thing I wanted to make a note is the yellow cable here is the positive, uh, the blue is the negative. So yellow will go to red uh, and blue will go to black. So I'm gonna go ahead and take off this zip tie and uh, some of this so I can actually get to more of the cable here. Then I'm gonna slice it and then I'm gonna attach it. All right, guys, now that I've got these just connected really quick, what I'm going to do is throw some solder on it and then put the heat shrink tube over it. Uh, if you're not soldering, uh, you can use either butt connectors or um, just make sure you get a really good tight twist on them and then use electric tape. I prefer solder because it gives a much cleaner connection. And again, yellow is positive, blue is negative. All right, now that this is in place, um, you can see here everything's connected and I got the heat shrink tubing over it. I'll just go ahead and push the seat back over and you don't even notice, um, which is nice. That's what I like. I'll put uh, the blue sleeve here back on when we're done. Um, I did go ahead and power it on, make sure that everything was connected and working as expected, and it is. One thing I wanted to make a note of. I know I sliced into the cable. Um, I just did it because it was the easiest option. For those of you who don't want to uh, cut into any of the cables or modify any of the stock parts, you don't have to. Uh, you can go ahead and just get a cable and run it the full length. And it came with a two pin connector on it. So you can just slice in the middle, extend the cable and uh, go ahead and just plug that into fan zero or fan one, depending on how you have it set up. and that would save you from having to cut into anything. But again, this was easier. It's already connected. I'm just using what's there. All right, so now we want to go ahead and take a look at our enclosure. All right, so one thing I wanted to mention really quick is this is an optional piece that you can print. Uh, it would sit on the fan duct cover here and act as an additional support uh, for your fan. If you have the uh, print mods direct drive upgrade that I used, uh, you cannot use this. There's not enough space. Uh, so you can give it a try if you're using a different uh, carriage, but if you're using the print mods one, um, don't even bother printing it. All right, next thing we wanna do here is we're gonna put the bolt in the back of this. I know it looked kind of rough on the back. I used tree supports just because of the way um, this piece was structured and it's the back, so I don't really care. And then we'll go ahead and put it on here. And then we wanna go ahead and mount this before we put the fans on. So we'll go ahead and do that really quick. All right, now that that's in place, uh, let's go to mount our BL touch. I'm just gonna move this around here. 
we'll slide the screw in here and then we put the bolt in the top hole. So we'll go ahead and attach it to that. And then you want to make sure that when this probe is engaged, it's going below the nozzle and when it's not, it's above the nozzle. All right, so now we're going to put the fan back on the front. I'm using M3 eight millimeter screws for it. And sorry uh, if I kind of get in the way of the angle a little bit, it's kind of hard to work on this um, from this angle. And you want to make sure that the label is facing the heat sink. All right, now that that's in place, I'm going to go ahead and put our new fan on. Um, we need to use the M3 20 millimeter screw. It's a little bit longer, so it's got to go all the way through there and then go into this housing here. Uh, we want to make sure that our heating element cable and stuff are fed through the little slot that's provided um, just so there's no issues and we're not crimping that. And then we'll just slide this into place and then we'll put our bolt in. All right, you wanna make sure you don't over tighten that so you don't break it. All right, and then if you've got the back bolt or the back mount, you wanna put the second bolt in. Uh, it's not 100% needed, but if you got it, you might as well use it. All right, so now let's go ahead and get our offsets so that we can update the firmware. We wanna get the offset on the X and Y axis. So I'm just gonna use my calibers here. All right, we're at 49 on the X axis and 19 on the Y axis. I will put that in the description below as well. And if you print it out the cover, which you can print in different colors, uh, you can kind of just go ahead and set that in place here. Um, it just kind of pops in. Just like so. And then that's the enclosure. Uh, so let's go ahead and go set our offsets. Then we can go ahead and kick off a test print. Okay, so we're here at the computer. I'm assuming that if you guys are watching this video that you've already edited firmware before. If not, I will link to a video that I did on compiling custom firmware. All right, so now what we wanna do is search for nozzle two. So just open that up. Um, and then here we have our uh, previous values. And then we had negative 49 and negative 19 based on the measurements that we just took. I remember that here would be the nozzle. Um, we're negative because we're going to the left and forward. So we're negative on both values. Um, if you're using a different type of adapter or setup before, you could have had different values, um, but I was already in this area before, uh, so I already had the negative values. All right, so now let's go ahead and build this. Let's just go down to um, build. All right, now we got a successful build. Let's go ahead and um, bring over our Explorer windows. I have my USB drive here, which is really an SD card. It's just a USB adapter. And then I'm in the root directory of um, the Marlin firmware here. So we wanna go into uh, .pio. If you're using a Linux or Unix OS, um, these dot folders are gonna be hidden. So you'll have to unhide them or browse to them through CLI. All right, so let's go into here, build our board and then find the firmware.bin make sure it matches the date and time then just drag this over and then we can go ahead and eject this the next step is going to be to put it in the printer and power it on all right guys now we're back at the printer let's go ahead and load the new firmware just put it into the sd slot on the board and we'll go ahead and power it on all right so that's loaded now we can go ahead and Remove it. And now we wanna go ahead and reset our Z offset. If you have the TFT35, it's simple. Uh, we'll just go into the menu here, go to movement, ABL, and Z offset, and then turn that on. It's gonna uh, prep it for us with the wizard it uses. Um, if you have the standard setup, um, I have a video that I did on uh, setting the Z offset. I'll link to that in the description below. Uh, but pretty much we'll go ahead and set this um, and then I'm going to uh, clean up my cables a bit and um, that's pretty much it. All 
All right, and then once that's set, uh, we'll make sure you save your um, memory. So save it to EEPROM or save memory depending upon what firmware you have. All right, guys, uh, that's pretty much all there was to it. It's not difficult. You're just swapping out a couple parts. Uh, I think the hardest part was trying to actually get the housing to mount on the uh, carriage. Uh, that took me the longest. But overall, it's not difficult, and it's definitely a worthwhile upgrade. Uh, the fan's not too loud, uh, but it is putting out significantly more air than that stock fan. Uh, so, as you can tell by the results, it is a worthwhile upgrade, and I think total, I don't know, it's probably around 10 bucks for it, uh, so it's not that expensive. If you have any questions about the process or like to uh, suggest any other videos or anything like that, go ahead and leave a comment below or join us on Discord. 